Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Well, I'm fine, thank you for asking. Of course I'm fine because I'm opening yet another vacuum cleaner. How many is it on my channel that I've opened? It must be in the hundreds. I don't think it's in the thousands yet, but you never know. Well, here's another vacuum cleaner that I used to own from brand new, but sold in the vacuum cull of the 90s. I've got one again, of course this is used. It possibly needs some work doing to it. Well, I think it's pretty definite. It'll need some work doing to it, at least a good spit and a polish. So let's get this Hoover Turbo Power 2 opened. I've got a couple of Turbo Power 2s. The base model, which I did buy brand new from eBay, didn't have the original box, but it was new. And I do have a new in the box Turbo Power 2 as well, a later version. You can check my channel if you want to see those. So this is a model I did want because it's the AutoSense version. So this is basically the only difference between this and the base model, I believe, the AutoSense. So let's hope it's survived the journey. Well, it's been packed with some bubble packets, not bubble wrap, what are these called? Air tech bag things, very useful for filling a void those are. And I keep trying to fill the void in my life with vacuum cleaners. It's never going to work. That void will never be full. But never mind. Right, yeah, mm, there's the handle. This is in a grey colour. I I'm, I'm, can't remember what uh, Hoover called it, but it's grey as you can see. Uh, it's a little Hoover roundel. So this is the handle. There's no switch on the handle as the previous turbo power cleaners the switch is on the main body of the machine so that makes the machine a bit cheaper probably to produce and assemble because there's no connectors in there so but the handle of obviously does need sliding onto the main body of the cleaner pretty common for uh, upright vacuum cleaners to require assembly most of them did need the handles. Oh, it's got a spare filter set. It's not genuine, but these are still widely available. You can still buy the, the originals as well, and the belts, of course, and bags. A lot of the parts are obsolete, of course, for these machines. But this is a set of three filters, actually, pre- and post-motor filters. I have actually got some more, so um, I'll be okay for filters. We've got some bags. These are high filter bags. This is when Hoover, whoops, three of them. I've dropped one. This is when Hoover moved on to the unbleached paper. I think they did that in the early 90s. Um, they used to be that yellow color for a while, didn't they? But now they've gone back to unbleached. This is a twin skinned, at least twin skinned bag. You can get the H18 fleece bags that fit this, which I will be using before I do a demo. They are a little bit more effective at uh, keeping the airflow than these paper ones. Also in the bags, we've got another filter, another exhaust filter with a brand name stamped on it. These are original because when I bought these machines from brand new, this was stamped on the filter fitted to the machine. But I always used to make sure they were fitted that way up so you couldn't see the writing. Okay, not so uh, much else packaging wise. This isn't original. This is possibly a pure power. It should be a gray color to match the machine. I don't know whether I'll get one to match. Hopefully at some point I will be able to get that correct uh, wand for this machine. Right, let's hope. Oh, what's that in the bottom of the box? These are fairly robust actually, he says. Looking at something in the bottom of the box. I just hope that's some uh, debris. I did find, I think some people may disagree with me. I think the, the Turbo Power 2s were the last of the sort of decent quality Hoover cleaners. It started going downhill when they introduced the Pure Power. Although the Pure Power back then, when it was first introduced, is certainly a lot better than the Chinese made Pure Power. They're still making the Pure Power or Enigma as Hoover call it, but it's still basically the same machine, but the quality has gone downhill. But I always thought the Turbo Power 2s, they're not light, but they are well made. Right, I'm hoping, oh dear. Oh, I bet that's the wheel. 
Oh dear. Right, let's see what's broken. It's possibly the wheel. How many times do wheels get broken? I don't know if I'm gonna get another wheel for one of these. You can get the complete chassis, but it's whether, is it the wheel? Yes, it is. It is the wheel, folks. The wheel is broken. Here's the wheel that's broken, folks. That's going to uh, <laughs> need replacing if I can get one. Now, in this instance, I will be complaining to the seller and seeing if I can get some money off. Because, folks, if you're selling a vacuum, if you're sending a vacuum through the post, in my experience, it's always the wheels, not just on upright cleaners, but also on cylinder models as well, I've had delivered and the wheels have been smashed. This is very frequent occurrence. So please folks, protect your wheel. If you're sending a vacuum in the post, protect the wheel. You can see many wheels for Hoover cleaners on sale on eBay, but they tend to be the Hoover Junior and Senior models. There's tons of those about, but I haven't actually seen any for the Turbo Power 2. So I'm going to have a little bit of a look now and see if I can get hold of one, fingers crossed. Okay, well, it's a little bit further on in the day for me. I've contacted the seller with pictures of the broken wheel and the seller is prepared to do a partial refund. I haven't discussed what I'd like that to be. I've also been on my Instagram page with pictures of the broken wheel asking if anyone has any spares and it looks like there's at least a couple of people who may be able to sell me a spare wheel or a pack of two spare wheels for this because I have been online and you can get quite a lot of parts for the later turbo powers uh, the very last version that came out the budget one you can still get quite a few of the parts apart from the back wheels which is ludicrous so I've given it a wipe just so I don't get covered in muck but I haven't given it any sort of a polish so if this works, obviously, we don't know if it works yet. Um, if it does work and I can get the other wheel, then it is worth refurbing. So we'll have a closer look at the machine. We might as well start off from the underside of the cleaner and work our way up. Here we have Hoover's activator brush roll and uh, it looks in pretty good condition. I don't know whether it's a replacement or it's the original brush roll, but it is genuine Hoover. I've just seen the Hoover stamp embossed just there and the side brushes they're quite long so that looks fine little bit of rust here on the wheel shaft for the front wheels and also for the carrier spring bit of Brillo and metal polish should sort that out this is being an earlier model We've got the clear inspection cover, which you need to undo with a little screw here. Later models had a yellow slide that you could just move back and then you could take this out and check for blockages. I think the Turbo Power 2s were prone to block um, quite uh, easily, but I never had that problem with vacuums blocking. I've, I, I still never do have the problem with vacuums blocking. A lot of people make complaints that their vacuums block up, but you know, unless I'm doing a very big mess test in general use, I've never really had that issue. But anyway, some people obviously do. And with this machine, because it's got quite a thin air path into the motor, this apparently did block. On the other side, we've got the belt. I always found on Turbo Power 2s, Turbo Power 3s, Turbo Power 1000s, the belts stretched very quickly. And because this one's been in storage and probably in a shed, it's uh, likely that I will need to replace the belt. I can't really show you. I'm gonna turn it on, obviously, but I can't really show you in action. Not, obviously, <laughs> with a wheel like that. I'll, I'll give it a push and see what happens. I think it's gonna bounce up and down somewhat. So there's the underside. We've got a little date wheel here, which uh, we can identify the date that the chassis was made. So we've got the year wheel pointing to 92 and the month wheel pointing to 10 so it would be around 1992 i would have thought that this whole machine was made here's the rating sticker so it's a hoover model u2464 240 volts 50 hertz and 800 watt motor beeb approved british electrotechnicals approvals board 
It's double insulated. The serial number is U2464212162. I think it is a 1992 model from that uh, serial number. Made by Hoover Limited, Great Britain. Here's the back of the cleaner. Down here we've got the foot operated handle release. That doesn't sound too healthy. That's something else that I'll need to look at. We've got the built-in hose. Now this is not a stair cleaning hose. I'll just take the cable off. It'll make it easier to access the hose. It's a thin bore hose, thin diameter. And it's rammed in there. Hang on. Oh, there we are. Uh, apparently again this was prone to blocking certainly more suction power on the turbo power twos than hoover provided with probably any other upright i'm not sure if the hoover convertible the machine that you had the hose you could plug into the back directly i'm not sure if that was a similar sort of suction but as far as modern day hoovers this really was a game changer it was much better suction power than supplied with the turbo power two or in fact sorry turbo power one and uh, turbo master so here we have the hose, again in the same grey. I think it was Dijon grey, Hoover called it, named after the Dijon in France, where they make mustard, and they used to make some Hoovers. So yes, not a stair cleaning hose. It does come out of the cleaner near the top, so could topple over. This looks original, it's in the right colour. Crevice tool. Later models did away with a separate crevice tool and had a scabbard tool nested inside the wand, which on here, of course, is not original. It needs to be the grey colour. These are untightly, but I suppose that's good. That's in very good condition. That's your upholstery nozzle. And finally, your dusting brush. And I think the small tools are original on this machine. So that's all I can show you on the back, apart from we've got, this is the carry handle, well the, the back carry handle, there is one at the front as well. It also forms the lower cord hook and there is here an upper cord hook that obviously you can turn down to release the cable. The hose, it all fits in very nicely. This was the first, as far as I know, I'm getting covered in muck, don't wear black trousers when you're unboxing a filthy vacuum. Now correct me if I'm wrong viewers, but I think this was the first Hoover Upright to incorporate tools from the beginning. Obviously we had the Turbo Power and Turbo Master Total System Cleaners, but they were existing designs that Hoover just slapped a hose on the side. And you could tell that it was an afterthought. With the Turbo Power 2, it was designed from the beginning to have the tools built in. And they did a very good job of incorporating the tools into the back of this machine without them looking out of place. From the front, you can't even see them. So it's a very neat design. When they introduced the stair cleaning feature, the hose was a lot, was a lot longer and it stuck out up here. So the hose was more obvious, but then it did reach up a standard flight of stairs. And that old, I remember when these were first launched and I got some promotional material from Hoover because I was in constant contact with Hoover asking them to send me stuff. This is before the internet as well so you got things through the post. Ah oh, those were the days. Uh, and I also I got the regular brochures but I also got uh, launch brochures and other information about this machine and I was so excited I got to find out about it before its launch and I thought ah oh, this is this is the bee's knees and to be honest, as far as modern hoovers go, I do like the Turbo Power 2s. So we've looked at the back. Let's uh, look at the front, starting with the cleaner head. So we've got Hoover's four position carpet height control here. And with a Turbo Power 2, you didn't have to raise the cleaner head in order to make it easier to move. You could control the height setting with the machine in the upright position, because when you lowered the handle, the cleaner head adjusted to the height you selected. So you've got the lowest setting for your low pile carpet and carpet tiles. Then you've got sort of regular carpet, short to medium, medium, and then your long pile carpet here. And that's also the setting when you were using the cleaning tools. 
Here's the exhaust filter which really improved the filtration of Hoover uprights. In the past it was mainly dirty fan Hoover cleaners which had pretty poor filtration but Hoover addressed the filtration issue with Turbo Power 2. No HEPA but it was classed as a micro filter, certainly better than most of the cleaners that went before. So this has got one of those branded exhaust filters which is obviously dirty. I will just replace that with the one that uh, was in the pack of bags and obviously the motor is housed behind here and there's obviously a motor spindle on one side which powers the agitator via the belt so there's that I think later versions let me just check yes because this is an earlier version later versions of the turbo power two or three or thousands did have a little section to put an air freshener, a little oblong air freshener, which absolutely smelt horrible. I didn't use it. Not like the round air fresheners that Hoover had for the earlier machines, which were quite pleasant. It wasn't very nice, the smell that came out of the filter. On this machine, just at the bottom of the bag door, we still have the Hoover Royal Warrant by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, manufacturers of vacuum cleaners and laundry equipment, Hoover Limited, Merthyr Tidfil, and obviously Merthyr Tidfil is where Hoover had their washing machine factory and of course their head office. So even though it says Merthyr Tidfil on the Royal Warrant, these were still made in Cambuslang, Scotland, but Hoover did have their head offices in Merthyr for many years and I think they still have their head office in Merthyr but of course the washing machine factory has now closed quite a few years ago. Further up on the bag door there's this cover plate earlier versions of the Turbo Power 2 and I did have one of the very first versions the base model it did have a piston bag check indicator here but that feature for some reason went pretty quickly and Hoover incorporated a neon indicator further up the control panel. Here's the sales sticker that was fitted to many machines from the 80s onwards. So we'll give it a read, shall we? It's a Hoover Turbo Power 2 AutoSense U2464. Powerful 800 watt motor. Unique AutoSense senses the power you need. 180% improved tools suction power. 50% noise reduction, 35% longer edge-to-edge -edge cleaning brushes, and 80% improved five-level filtration. And in very small writing here, if I can see it, all comparisons against previous turbo power models. Now, I'm a little bit dubious about removing this. Now, they're not a sticker. They are easy to remove, but... Ooh, that's good. Sometimes these can actually leave a mark on the machine as with the Turbomaster I used to own, but it's okay with that one. I'll just leave it on there for now. I will be removing that, but I'll be obviously keeping that little sticker. To access the dust bag, we have a little button on the top of the bag door and inside the bag door looks fine. We've got another couple of date wheels here, so I'll have a quick look at those. Again, it says 92 but this part was made in the 11th month of 92. We've got a bag. There's a little red catch at the top. We just push up to release the bag collar. And it's been supplied with a little bit of dirt. There is the bag slide on the bottom. And here is the first of the pre-motor filters. It's a sponge affair, which hasn't actually deteriorated yet but it will need replacing and then under that we've got what Hoover says a charcoal filter for reducing odors obviously all this needs a good clean out it needs a complete strip down really and a good a good soak in a bath of biological washing powder so there we go there's the filter we'll pop the original bag back you just locate it at the bottom and push it forward until it clips in. Now notice with this one, the casing, the outer casing has come away slightly from this inner casing. So obviously that needs assembling properly. But for the initial switch on, I will uh, leave it as it is. 
I don't think it's going to affect the suction. It's just, it just bows out a little bit here. Can't really tell, but that will just push back into place. Okay, onto the exciting part, the control panel. So here's the control panel, which was the most exciting part of this machine when I first owned one back in the 90s. Obviously the first model I owned just had the on off switch and it had the piston bag check indicator. The later basic versions had the on off switch and a bag check indicator somewhere on the panel. But as you can see, this has got an extra button and some lights. We all like some lights, don't we, on our cleaners. So on off. This machine also has boost, so you turn it on. If you want maximum power all the time, which I expect most people did, you would just press that boost button in and this would light up red, I seem to remember, to show it's in boost mode. Boost overrides the auto sense feature. Here we have the bag check indicator. And as I said, on earlier models, even on this machine, it would have been a piston style on the uh, bag door, in the middle of the bag door. So, this has the auto sense. So auto sense is default. If you don't have boost, the auto sense feature works. So it starts off on the regular setting, which is the middle setting here that will light up as you're cleaning. If it doesn't detect you're picking up a lot of dirt, it will revert to the low power setting here and continually monitor. It listens. It has a little microphone built in and it listens to the dirt entering the bag. And if it hears a lot of dirt coming in, it will boost up the power to pick up the dirt. When it can't hear the dirt coming in anymore, it'll lower the power level. A very advanced feature for the time and different to the other auto uh, suction features that uh, Hoover had on their Sensortronics, that just adjusted the suction power um, resulting in a reduced power. If the airflow got blocked on a Sensortronic, it just lowered the power. This one actually sensed the dirt going in and adjusted the machine accordingly. So, you know, pretty advanced for its time and some machines even now use that sort of technology. Okay then, so apart from the disappointment with the broken wheel, which hopefully will be resolved the next time you see this, we've still got to switch this machine on. So it is plugged in, it's turned on here. So I'm just going to walk behind the camera, switch it on at the wall socket, and we'll see if this Turbo Power 2 AutoSense actually works. Let's hope so. Well, that's good. It does seem to work. And to my ears, that motor sounds fine. It sounds like it should sound. I was concerned that this would be an absolute wreck. But yeah, it's clean. Well, it's cleaner now. Um, it will look better than this when I've uh, thoroughly stripped it down and given it a T cut and then a final polish. Um, I'm really pleased to have it and hopefully, of course, I've, as I said, I've got a couple of people already offering me wheels, which I will pay for. I don't want them for free. I'm not going to try and catch them. But we can uh, just check on the AutoSense. The AutoSense system did seem to work when I initially turned the machine on and the boost worked as well. The... I'm going to turn the cleaner on again and you'll notice that the middle light will illuminate for a few seconds until it detects there's no dirt being picked up. Then it will lower the power. And of course, when I press the boost button, this light should illuminate at the end with the plus symbol. While I've got the cleaner in its unrefurbished state, might as well just see what the suction power is like through the hose end. And if I remember, I'll do it again after refurbishment just to see if I can increase it. Obviously, putting in new filters and a new dust bag might make a little bit of a difference on the gauge, might give me a couple of extra notches. But for now, we'll just turn it on. I don't know what happens actually when you block the end off of the hose, I think it automatically goes into the higher suction setting.
Oof. She's a whiffy old girl, I'll tell you that now. She does need a good bath. Bit smelly, a little bit musty smelling. Um, yes, it did. When I blocked the end of the hose off, it went into the mid setting. And I, I don't know if you could see, but the bag check or blockage indicator illuminated red. But I'll just see. I'm going to see what it's going to be like on the regular setting, and then I'll boost it. We're not uh, expecting a huge increase in the suction, but anyway, we'll have a go. Here we are. Well, it seemed to get to just over 60 on the gauge, which is far better than I was expecting. That was obviously on the boost mode. Possibly a combination of it being clean fan and this small diameter hose maybe intensified the suction. But yes, <laughs> compared to previous Hoover models with the tools, 60 is very, very good. I'm going to give this Turbo Power 2 a little bit of a push over the carpet, but obviously it's not going to do very well with one wheel smashed to smithereens. But we might as well, <laughs> we might as well give it a go. And then at least when I do the refurb video, the after refurb video, you'll see what a difference a proper wheel makes. And also, that yeah, that is a little bit odd as well. Okay, <laughs> here goes nothing. <laughs> Well, that was, a <laughs> that was a waste of time, really, wasn't it? But anyway, I thought I'd better show you. So yes, obviously that one component um, that's broken has absolutely ruined this machine, but I think it'll all turn out fine in the end when you eventually see this again. It's a lovely day today, but it's going to be. It's certainly vacuum part drying weather, so maybe if I feel like it, I might start stripping this down, but I think I'll get the uh, problem sorted out with the seller first. See if I can get my partial refund and also the replacement wheel or wheels. Um, I think there's no point in cleaning up until that's happened. Anyway, all in all though, it wasn't cheap to be quite honest with you. Uh, nowhere near as cheap as the Turbo Power One in Burgundy that I got. This was over £100, which is ludicrous, but you don't see so very many of these about anymore, especially the AutoSense versions. And I have wanted to complete my collection with an AutoSense version for quite some time. So, you know, I was happy to pay that amount. Not so happy about the broken wheel, but it's just a vacuum. I'm not gonna shed any tears over it. I'm sure it will get sorted out in the end. If you have any comments or questions about the Hoover Turbo Power 2, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So until the next time, I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.